Now, my general RSS feed reader is Newsboat because Newsboat makes it really easy to work with RSS feeds, makes it very easy to do things like filtering, but for some people, they don't really need that stuff or they'd much rather go and do it themselves. So for those people, there's a much simpler option out there and that option is called S-Feed. S-Feed, I wouldn't even call a RSS feed reader S-Feed is basically just an RSS feed parser, and then you have to go and decide how you're going to make a reader around it. Ultimately, you can say, I don't even want a feed reader, I just want to dump everything into my terminal and just scroll through my terminal. Now, when you first try out S-Feed, make sure you go and read the readme. I know this sounds really obvious, but in a lot of cases, you really don't need to go and do so to work out how an application functions. S-Feed, though you're probably not going to work it out. And even doing things like, say, checking the man pages isn't really going to go and help. So just read the readme. I will be going over some of it, though, in this video. Once you have your feeds inside of SFeed, this is where it becomes really, really powerful. So let's say we want to go and take all of our RSS feeds and then parse them as plain text because plain text is very easy to work with and we can go and write whatever interface we want to write for it. Well, what we can do is run the sfeed underscore plain command and then run it over all of the RSS feeds we have and we're going to get this output right here. So this is basically just tab separative values, very easy to work with. But maybe we don't want plain text. Maybe instead we want something that just works nicely inside of our web browser. Well, what we can do, instead of using the plain command, we can instead use the HTML command. So let's go and actually save this to a file. So test.html. And I'm going to just go and open up that file. So test.html inside of whatever browser it chooses. So Firefox in this case. And basically we have an RSS feed reader right here. We don't even have to go and write an interface. We could just go and use our web browser. We could even go and parse the feeds in an existing feed format, like say, for example, Atom. Now, this seems fairly counterproductive because most RSS feed readers already support Atom feeds anyway. So unless you're writing specifically an Atom feed, there's not really any reason to go and do this. But one thing you might want to do is parse it as a TWTXT feed. Now, I have no idea what these feeds are. I've never actually run across them myself. But if you use a TWTXT feed reader, maybe this will be useful for you. Now, dumping stuff into your terminal is cool and all, but what can we actually go and do with this? Well, luckily on the SFeed website, they actually included a really useful example, which goes and uses things like sed and dmenu to actually make a pretty decent RSS feed reader. And I've just gone and called the script RSS reader. So it looks a little something like this. First, it's going to go and update all of my feeds. And then once it's gone and done that, it should open up dmenu. And then once I actually go and select something, it's going to open that up inside my web browser. So let's say we want to open up the 5.11 main article right here. And that will go and open that up inside of Brave. And basically, it opens up that article. And then once we go and close Brave, it won't actually go and reopen dmenu, but doing that would be a fairly easy addition. Now, this script is really nothing that crazy. Basically, all it's doing is running sfeed update to actually go and update all of the feeds. This is something built into sfeed. I'll go over that in just a moment. Then it's doing a command expansion to grab the URL of the article. So to do that, it's running sfeed plain on all of the feeds and piping all of that just into D menu. It's not actually doing any parsing on it. So it's just dumping the entire line directly into a line on D menu. And then it's using this sed command here to strip out the URL. I don't exactly understand how this sed command is working, but it strips out the URL somehow. And then if you actually selected a URL, it's going to open up that URL inside of your browser. This is a slightly modified version of what's shown on the SFeed website. So if you do want to try it out for yourself, there'll be a link to my GitHub in the description down below. Because of the way this is functioning, it'd be very easy to go and swap out the dmenu command right here for something like, let's say, fzf instead. Or maybe you want to use Rofi. I don't know. Whatever you want to use, let's just go and run it as RSS Reader again. And it's going to go and update stuff. And now it's basically opened up the exact same thing inside of FZF. So let's say I want to go and select this one right here. And now it still works exactly the same way. Now, if you're exceptionally lazy, but you still want to run something like SFeed, the developers did actually go and make a cursed interface you can use instead. It's not the most exceptional RSS feed reader, but it does the job. 
if you do want to install it, you don't actually get it with the main SFeed application. You have to go and install it separately. But if we go and run SFeed underscore cursors and pass all of our feeds into it, basically it's going to look a little something like this. We can go and move around with our arrow keys or with the Vim keys, whichever one we want to use. And then if we want to go and open something up, all we need to do is go and press enter on it and then it opens it up in our web browser. Basically, if you've ever used a simple RSS feed reader before, it's pretty much the same. Even though it's not very difficult, let's have a look at how we actually add some RSS feeds. So the way we do that is inside of a folder called .sfeed, you're going to want to have a file called sfeedrc. The readme does go over this, and this file right here actually is the default sfeedrc. So inside of this, this is actually just a shell script. So this right here is actually a shell function, and inside of here, these are all shell function calls. So if you want to go and add a new feed, you have to call the feed function, you have to give the feed a name, and then you have to give the feed a URL. There are some other things you can go and add, like say the base site URL and the encoding, but those are entirely optional. And then once these are in here, what you can go and do is run a program called sfeed underscore update and that will actually go and download the update. So what that's actually going to do is save those inside of a folder called feeds. And this is basically all of the feeds you've downloaded. They've already been parsed into a form that's much easier to work with. So unlike being in XML, now they're in the plain text form instead. You don't necessarily have to have the feeds located here. They can be moved if you do want to move them. So inside of the man page for SFeedRC, it explains how to do that. Basically what you're going to do is set a variable called SFeed path. And you may have noticed that inside my SFeedRC. So this one right here. So home slash dot sfeed slash feeds if you go and uncomment that and then set it to a different location it will save the feeds in a different location if you're using something like sfeed i can't imagine it's going to be your first rss feed reader so this does actually support opml imports so let's say i wanted to go and import my feeds over from Newsboat, for example. So what I can do is inside of Newsboat, it has the dash E option. That's going to export out all of my different feeds. And what I can do is pipe that into sfeed underscore OPML underscore import, and then redirect that into the location of my sfeed RC. So home slash dot sfeed slash sfeed RC and spell it correctly. And now that I've done that, if we go back to that file, as we can see, all of the feeds have changed in here, but they're in the correct form for SFeed. And you can export your feeds in OPML as well. As you'd expect, it's done with the SFeed underscore OPML underscore export command. I'm not going to go and overwrite my feeds inside of Newsboat because I have a lot of stuff in there that I still need to read. But as we can see, these are all of the new feeds we just added to SFeed. Now, one of the interesting things about SFeed is that because the RC file is configured with shell script, you can actually go and override the functions inside of it. Now, you're not going to override, say, the feed or the feeds function, but there are functions being used in the background, for example, like the fetch function or the convert encoding or parse or filter or merge or order. All of these ones, you can go and override and do whatever you want to do with them. Personally, I'm perfectly fine with the way they work out of the box, but you may have some use case where that isn't actually the case. Now, one weird tool I'd never seen an equivalent for was SFeed Web. Basically, what it lets you do is you pass in a URL and it's supposed to go and find an RSS feed on that page. Now, it's very hit and miss whether it's actually going to do that. I've noticed that it works perfectly fine on sites like XKCD and on a lot of news sites, but on YouTube, I can't seem to get it to actually work. It's a nice inclusion, but not knowing whether it's going to work makes it hard to recommend this specific part of the application. Ultimately, you're better off just searching for the feed yourself because if there is a feed, you know that's going to work. Now, instead of reading a feed, let's say instead you wanted to go and make your own RSS feed, one way you can go and host that is over on Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? 
They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or a personal VPN, you know there's going to be one that fits you. Going forward, I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone regardless of your plan size. So right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. So I think SFeed is a really, really cool tool. Personally, I'm going to be sticking with Newsboat though just because I really like the way that Newsboat works. If I was going to be using SFeed, basically what would happen is I would just rebuild Newsboat. And while that does sound like kind of a fun project, right now it's not something I really want to take on. Maybe it will be in the future, but if you don't like Newsboat or maybe you just want to have something very, very simple, this actually is a really good choice to go with. So I think that's going to be everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Monster, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter, Steven, Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, there are links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave a pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere, and then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and YouTube. If you want to watch on a platform that isn't... Did I say end YouTube? Odyssey, Library, and BitChute. If you don't want to watch on a platform... Sure, whatever. You know, you know the outro. I'm out.